Well, as the Isle of Man gets ready to start medical cannabis trials, I thought it'd be interesting to get the, the views of uh, somebody we, we've met uh, from time to time in this programme, Gavin St. Pierre, down in Guernsey, the ex-chief minister. And Gavin, you, you, you have made quite a few comments about how things are going in Guernsey, because I know both Jersey and Guernsey are ahead of the loop, really, on, on the whole thing compared to the Isle of Man. But it's not been plain sailing, I understand. No, I, I mean, this is a sector that I've been watching for some time um, and, and seeking to understand it. It's quite complicated, the level of, of, of regulation and the number of issues that are involved. Um, Guernsey moved a little while ago to allow um, the prescribing of, of medicinal cannabis and medicinal cannabis products. And initially that took the form of, of um, licensed importation. Uh, which was was quite heavily regulated but more recently we've moved to a system where most of those who seek uh, medical cannabis products are able to obtain them from a number of clinics on island um, and i think what that is producing is is, is you know significant uh, volume is is being um, uh, prescribed in that way uh, and and perhaps you know as as would be expected there will inevitably be some diversion from the uh, medical cannabis market to the recreational market and then that then of course takes you back around to the question well what do you do or what should we be doing about uh, recreational cannabis which of course is a is a big issue um i think really right across the world in, to, in, in sort of seeking to react to the um evolution in this whole topic after what nearly 60 years of prohibition so how are the police in guernsey dealing with that i mean are you, when people are selling this medical cannabis off to people who are just using it recreationally. That, I mean, it was legal when they got it, but then it becomes illegal. I mean, it's a bit of a nightmare, isn't it? Well, I, I think that's right. I mean, I think we have to remember that, of course, um, you know, part of the, the whole um, challenge of the abuse of substances is actually prescribed um, products, um, prescribed, prescribed medicines are a significant part of that social problem. In other words, you know, long before medicinal cannabis was was part of the mix, um, there were plenty of other forms of prescribed medicine that were were being diverted, um, and, and you know, that remains the case. And I think any strategy that seeks to deal with drug abuse needs to remember that it's it's, it's a far bigger issue than than simply those substances which are are illegal. Um, you've also got to deal with the, the prescribed but legal substances which are being diverted. I think you're one for legalisation, aren't you, in general, aren't you? When it comes to cannabis, I mean, I think that my view is is prohibition has demonstrably failed. Um, and that actually, uh, I think very much like prohibition failed in the, in the United States in the 20s and 30s, the, the, the recognition is, is we need to accept, um, it doesn't mean we need to condone it, but we need to accept that it is it is part of uh, of our society and that therefore it's in the best interests of the community as a whole to actually regulate it as we have done with alcohol and tobacco. Again, if we were starting from scratch, would we ever permit alcohol and tobacco? Probably not, but we've recognised they are part of um, of society and so we seek to minimize the harm by regulating them and by taxing them uh, and, and of course that then ensures that you're able to maintain some kind of control over the market and and in particular of course maintain control over the quality because the reality is is that if if, if people are consuming uh, from dealers on the streets as it were they've got absolutely no idea what what is is being mixed what is in in that product um, with all the uh, health consequences that could arise as a result. So, yes, I, my view is, is we would be better to regulate um, and, and tax the market uh, as, as we've done with alcohol and tobacco. Now, this growing of hemp was going to be the next great big thing, wasn't it, after all the offshore sort of side of things in the um, Crown dependencies. Uh, it hasn't quite worked out like that, has it? You had quite a lot of licences originally, I understand. We did, yes, we did. I mean, no, it's, it, it, it's not worked out at all well in that, that, that quite a number of those who, in a rush of enthusiasm, went out to uh, obtain licenses to be able to, to plant and to um, spend a considerable amount of money on securing 
the, the, the plots um, have found that the, the, there's been no market for the product um, and has ended up having to be plowed back in or destroyed um, in, in a controlled way. And this is all to do with the um, regulation uh, which has come about as a result of the memorandum of understanding which each of the islands now have with the Home Office. And, and I think that's one of the um, issues that needs to be understood, well understood, by policymakers and indeed by those that are trying to exploit the opportunity around this industry. Um, the UK, as we know, is responsible for the island's um, uh, uh, international obligations. And, and of course, there are international conventions which deal with, uh, with cannabis and deal with its trans transporter shipment. Um, and, and that is, in essence, what is acting as a major drag on, on, this, um, on, on anybody seeking to develop in, in the islands. And, and I think, really, the British Isles are, are, are actually falling behind um, many of the other jurisdictions in Europe and, of course, in, in the US and North America. Um, and, and until we, we sort of recognise that and, and seek to... to to um, uh, find the solutions which those other countries have found, those other jurisdictions have found, I don't think this industry is going to go anywhere too quickly um, in, in, the, in the near future. Well, the Isle of Man, as I said at the beginning, is way behind on this compared with you. Would you actually say it's not actually one of those things to be bothered with? I mean, is it, is it a ship that sailed and proved not to be working anyway? I mean, should we go uh ahead? Well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a natural optimist, so I wouldn't you know, necessarily um, give up quite so quickly, but I'm, I'm really it's a council of caution that based on our experience and indeed from what I understand in, in Jersey, there are significant obstacles uh, which I don't think have yet been fully understood or fully overcome. And I think it is uh, very much incumbent on, in, on those that are seeking to develop this industry um, to ensure that, that their local government not only understands the issues, but is fully on board for working their way through to, to proactively to finding solutions. And I think I sense at the moment um, that the position of the governments, the local governments in each of the jurisdictions is probably more reactive to the situation in which they've found themselves, particularly vis-a-vis -vis the Home Office um, and uh, the, the obligations which have been taken on under the Memorandum of Understanding. So I think there is some way to go, but I think my, my sense is that, that the governments need to um, perhaps uh, recommit to this sector by uh, if you like, rolling up their sleeves um, and, and get, getting under the, the uh, bonnet of, of the, the challenges which are faced by the, these international obligations and regulations and really work out what is possible uh, and what can be, uh, can be developed. For example, one opportunity may be to, to develop what is effectively a closed market in other words that you're you're only um, growing and supplying within um, the jurisdiction so there's no no attempt to deal with any kind of transshipment now obviously that would limit the scale of the um, the the market in terms of for those that are seeking to grow but but that may be where one of the opportunities lies but but these are the these are the challenges which do need to be considered uh, i'm I'm not an expert in this area and um, uh, but it is one that I'm, I'm seeking to um, familiarise myself with because I'm not entirely convinced that um, we've yet got a grip of it. It sounds like some people got their fingers burned. I mean, just the, the picture you painted of this uh, hemp being pushed back and furrowed back into the land because they mm. couldn't actually sell it must have been quite, uh, well, distressing at the time because this was meant to be such a, a great thing to be getting into at that stage. No, well, I think it has. I mean, certainly for those um, those that have, have uh, had to do that, I think it's more than having their fingers burned. I think, you know, there was a considerable amount of money has been lost. Um, and there are quite a lot of angry people and quite a lot of finger pointing as to who is responsible. Um, and that's, uh, you know, clearly that's an uncomfortable position that maybe really desire to be in. So, um, yeah, I think if, if the Isle of Man is a little bit behind the curve, uh, I would certainly recommend that it... Um, takes a look and, and sees, sees what has happened here, why it's happened, and whether it can avoid some of those problems itself. Okay, just to finish with, is the Home Office you're really blaming? Is, is it That's where the sort of paperwork hasn't been able to be fulfilled or well, licences granted? I, I mean, as I say, I think, that, I think the Home Office and, and the, the present government in 
London you know, have a probably more hostile, um, more um, reactionary view in relation to this whole uh, sector and its development than perhaps some other jurisdictions do. And, and undoubtedly, that is, I think, informing um, the relationship between the island governments and, and the UK, given the existence of both the MOU and the UK's international obligations. So, um, again, I, I, I haven't been a party uh, to all of those uh, discussions and, and the ongoing uh, communications between between them, but I, I think undoubtedly the UK's pretty negative attitude to this um, is um, is playing a part and is playing out in terms of the way the regulation is interpreted. Because as as with any set of rules, it's 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 not necessarily the rules themselves, but it's how you uh, it's, it's how you choose to interpret them. And as I said, it's clear that other jurisdictions um, outside the British Isles are, are taking a different view in relation to some of these um, some of these issues and and that i think is is um, a major issue for all of us in the British Isles.